uh, reading of a four beam balance. And the way this works is we have to read mass from one, two, three, four different sliders. Of course, when you start out on weighing anything, you want to have all your sliders all the way over to the left. And the, the reason you want to do that is so that you can make sure that your balance is actually balanced. And that happens over on this side. And I'm not going to be actually balancing anything. I'm just going to move sliders to show you how to read them. So let's start out with a real simple one. Let's say that something is between 1 and 10 grams. And so you'll notice as I move this slider, see these little notches? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's little notches there. And when this slider is not in the notch, you see you can't read the number? and it's kind of cockeyed a little bit. It's not parallel to the ground. And so if I bring it over to say, I wanted to put it on five, it's still not quite right. I have to, oh, there we go, it is right. And off to the left a little bit, no good. This slider must always be right in the notch. If it's not in the notch, your mass will not mean a blessed thing. Okay, so what is my mass right now? How would you read that? Five grams. Five grams, of course. That's easy. Okay, so let's put another level of complication into it now. Let's add weight from here. Well, that's not moving too easily, so I'm going to pick it up from the bottom. And let's move this over to the 20. Now, how do I read this? 25, just like you thought. Yes, it, it's very logical. You just add them together. Now, for this guy to have full accuracy, oh, what the heck, let's put this guy in over too. Now, what's our mass? 125. Absolutely. Good. Now, let's look at this little slider and what that does. That's where you get your accuracy. That guy is going to tell you within one one thousandth of a gram the mass of the object that's on your pan. So let's just move this over here and now let's zoom in on this guy and see exactly where it is. Oh, that's so nice and clear. It was. <laughs> let's try again. There. That is. That's very, very nice. Okay, for what you're looking at, you can see that this guy has set a position that's between these two lines. Okay? It's between two lines. So, this is point 2, this is point 3. And between them is 10 lines. So, each of those lines is point zero 0.01. So, I have a one, uh, point two one, point two two, point two three, point two four, point two five, point two six, point two seven, point two eight, point two nine, and when I get here, I'm at point three, but I'm not at three, am I? I'm a little bit off to the left of it. This is what we call the estimating digit, and so we add up all of our other numbers just like we did before, and let's get in there nice and close, and get that one more time. All right, very, very clear. Now, can you see it's a little more than halfway between the lines? Okay, so th if this is 0.29 and this is 0.3, we're what, about six or seven across? If there's 10 imaginary lines there, would everybody say? about six or seven across. Okay, So I'm going to call this number 100. Let's go back out here. Okay, 100 because of this guy. 20 because of this guy. 5. So that's 125 and I'm going to write that down on a piece of paper so you'll be able to see it later. And you ought to write that down at the same time. 
right here I have 0.29, which I'm going to add to this, 0.29, and the last digit is our guess about how far between the lines it is. And that is about 7, yes? Okay, so we'll call that 7. And here's what your number looks like. Okay, 25.297 grams. The 100, you see this is in columns? This is the hundreds column, yes? And it comes from our hundreds ma uh, mass that we're moving across. This is the, tw the uh, tens column, and we have 20. And this is the ones column, where we have 5. And each of those came from their corresponding sliders. And then this guy is our little slider that doesn't have notches. And the point 2 we can read directly. We know that it's past point 9, and it was about 7 tenths between 9 and 10 which would bring us up to, of course, point 0.3. So that's how you measure, or that's how you read a triple beam balance.